think we are at a very interesting point where uh, data science uh, can actually play an enormous role in healthcare. And more broadly, I think digital technologies and healthcare has a very good uh, meeting point that probably India has an opportunity to leapfrog and also, uh, you know, greatly improve the delivery of healthcare with, uh, with the use of some of these technologies. Um, I think uh, um, using the word epidemiology, and for most of you uh, who are connected with the medical profession, but I, uh, I teach uh, um, at the Indian Institute of Science, and, and one of the courses that I've just introduced there is a course on digital epidemiology. And, uh, and uh, the, uh, of course, the word epi epidemiology uh, comes from epi and demos, uh, and which means about populations or upon populations. Now, um, uh, you know, the New England Journal of Medicine holds a spring meeting. It's actually called the Massachusetts Medical Council. It, uh, it holds a meeting uh, in the spring every year. And this year's meeting was dedicated to epidemics. And, uh, and the key lecture was given by Bill Gates. And, uh, and uh, it was, it's called the Shatak Lecture. And in his, and if you get the New England Journal of Medicine, the May 31st issue, the, the lecture is reproduced there. So I would urge you to, to read it. And in that, he talks about uh, how, in many ways, uh, you know, we've learned how to deal with uh, the big challenges of uh, HIV, uh, where now, you know, people, you can manage uh, a patient with HIV. Uh, with uh, uh, even malaria is now slowly coming under control. But this whole idea that there could be a pandemic because all it takes is for one person to sit in a plane and move an infection from uh, one country to another, infect the other passengers in the plane, or whatever, uh, there is now an increasing sense of, of threat uh, that the entire world is, is sensing. And, uh, and, you know, and of course, uh, what you see on the slide there is a computer simulation of what would happen if there was a global epidemic of influenza for which you had no ability to control and how within six months or so, you would have about 32 million people seriously affected. Um, and uh, there have been many, many such studies carried out and so on. So uh, there's actually a coalition now for looking at innovations to address epidemics. It's called CEPI, C-E-P-I. We'll, we'll talk more about it later. And, um, and CEPI has been funded by a group of agencies, and they've put about $630 million, or uh, the last I heard. And they're actually going after various strategies of how to address epidemics and pandemics. Right? Now, interestingly, uh, the, their first focus on vaccine development has been on not what you normally think, would think of. So anybody wants to guess what vaccines are being developed for, you know, for trying to control pandemics? Um, yeah, it, sorry, I couldn't hear that. Zika, you know, could be one, but it, it turns out that the first three that they're going after are Lhasa, MERS, and Nipah. Okay? So that really caught my attention because, you know, we faced the challenge 
with Nipah, right? Not so long ago. And uh, in fact, uh, my friend, Dr. Arun Kumar, who at Manipal runs the virus research group there, uh, was instrumental in detecting it early, right? And, um, and if you look at that uh, timeline there, I'm not sure how visible it is, but uh, the samples were sent to him, and by, I think, May 18th, he had a diagnosis, right? Now, the reason he was prepared with a diagnosis was that much earlier on, when we had, uh, uh, I think, one of the flu epidemics that was starting to threaten, I think it was SARS, and then, uh, you know, after that, uh, swine flu, avian flu, um, and so on, um, the, um, uh, the ICMR decided to set up sentinel sites around the country, and uh, the Manipal uh, Center for Virus Research is sort of overseeing all of these centers. And so Arun's group was prepared to diagnose Nipah, uh, because they were looking at, uh, um, I think, uh, Tripura and various states in the northeast where they were expecting that there could be an outbreak because there had been outbreaks in West Bengal, in, in uh, Bangladesh, and they were, uh, they, so they were prepared for that. So they, they were able to run the tests and quickly diagnose it, but then it took another couple of days for... Um, for the National Institute of Virology to actually confirm the diagnosis. So they didn't announce it till the May 20th, I think. But uh, the Kerala Public Health authorities moved into action. Um, and uh, actually, Arun and I did uh, a webinar a couple of nights back uh, uh, to a group of uh, people uh, who are taking a course on epidemiology through the Takshashila Institute. Um, of course, epidemiology and public health, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, challenges and, and we know how to, how to get to those challenges. But, uh, you know, this is all theoretical. How, to, how do you actually get to those contagion models? How do you actually know how you're going to contain and what are the strategies and how can you make all this evidence-driven? and not eminence-driven, right, as often happens. Um, so, uh, you know, there are, uh, there are approaches now that are starting to get very, very sophisticated. And this is where data science comes in. And essentially, you have to look at behavioral networks, social networks, so to speak. Um, you have to look at how information goes, you know, goes through many of these networks, how that spreads, fear, panic, you know, all of those uh, socio-cultural aspects. And, of course, you have to know the disease dynamics. You have to know how the, how the contagion actually spreads and, and how, uh, how infection spreads and how do you model all that. And um, so for the U.S., uh, with about uh, 300 million population, it turns out that the, if you actually want to look at it from an evidence base uh, that actually integrates all of this information, it would involve something like 100 gigabytes of data, right? And uh, so this is where, you know, it has to be done um, with, uh, you know, I think serious professional help from... Uh, from computer scientists, data scientists, and so on, who can, who can get involved in this. And uh, this is why I believe that this has to be, in some ways, a multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary effort that, that comes together to, to take care of this. Um, just want to also bring out that uh, another aspect in here is prediction. How do you actually predict how, uh, uh, can you predict ahead of time that there's going to be a, an outbreak or a high incidence of some disorders? 
And uh, so this is the work by an undergraduate student in mathematics at, uh, at IISC, uh, Atlanta Chakravarti, who just wrote her thesis on this, where, you know, again, using um, time series data, uh, um, and she was able to actually build a model that gives a reasonable prediction over the next six months what the incidence of dengue will be in Singapore. And um, this, uh, uh, you know, she was able to build this model and train it using modern machine learning techniques and so on, partly because you had excellent data from Singapore, right? So the, the you know, you actually have historical data on which you can train these, uh, these predictive models. And um, uh, now she is going on to actually add uh, temperature and rainfall data and, you know, uh, to, to improve the veracity and the predictive power of, of these models. And so, uh, I, you know, when she started doing this work, we tried very hard to get data like this in India, and that was a challenge. So, so I think, you know, we, we need to put together efforts now to, to pull together you know, better data to be able to drive this kind of evidence-driven uh, epidemiology. I think uh, that's, uh, that's a list of the kinds of models that one could build for different types of uh, epidemics and, and how, um, how you, could, um, you could use those to, to design things. Um, now, you know, I think the Nipah story actually made me feel very hopeful because you know, it seems like we are getting into position to, to do things a lot better. But, you know, let's face it, I think we are actually in a situation where we need to do a lot, right? Um, the Lancet uh, ranking of public health preparedness in, in India and uh, our ability to reach the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs. Um, we were ranked in the 140s, and now we have actually slipped down to the 150s, 50, 154th or something like that in, in, uh, in the rankings, uh, uh, worldwide rankings that Lancet puts out. So, so there's a lot of work to be done but, and this is where, you know, we, uh, I think we have to bring all the tools that, that we have at our disposal to, to try to improve things. Um, I think uh, the, uh, the three major factors that are listed there are things like hygiene, malaria. So I think the combination of basic development approaches and epidemiological approaches are, ne are needed if you want to really reach goals that, that uh, are aspirational goals for us. I mean, the Prime Minister has, of course, declared uh, that we will stop TB by 2025, and that was one of those sustainable development goals, which from 2030, it's been pulled back to 2025. And in order to get anywhere close to that, I think we need, we need a lot of uh, different uh, approaches that, that can help us there. Um, I mentioned CEPI, which is the coalition, um, and uh, this uh, coalition has been pulled together to, to improve preparedness for epidemics. Um, and. Um, and is driving innovation, and there's there's a there's a large fund that has been pulled together. I think Gates Foundation, Wellcome Trust, the World Economic Forum, several agencies have have got involved. And uh, and the interesting thing is that India is now a nodal center because of our ability to manufacture vaccines. Today, you know, 
every third vaccine given to a child in the world is actually made in India. So, so we have that ability to, to, to manufacture at scale and, uh, you know, and I think the, the research and development to actually come up with uh, vaccines um, that are relevant to uh, dealing with epidemics, I think, is, uh, is what is being built. Uh, of course, the main activity today has started in the national capital region. Uh, where you see THSTI and several institutes being brought together to work on this. ICGEB uh, is another such center. Uh, but of course, the, uh, the various, um, you know, the entire sort of medical establishment in, in India will obviously need to be involved in, in uh, uh, taking these innovations and diffusing them and validating the new technologies and so on. So let me just uh, um, conclude then with this idea that we are at a situation now we really need to focus on building something that I am calling the health heat map of India, right? And I think in order to build something like this, um, we, you know, as I, again, I, I'm repeating myself, but you really need to bring uh, data scientists, epidemiologists, public health uh, agencies, stakeholders uh, together and, uh, and to create uh, a, an integrated platform where where we would be in a position to, um, to respond to uh, health emergencies, but also just improve our general levels of, uh, of healthcare delivery and planning. And, um, and, and I think that's the idea that I would like to leave you to. And, uh, and again, being the Mahala Novus Day today, uh, Indian Statistics Day. Um, let's actually uh, think about how all of these uh, uh, ideas in data science and uh, computation and health uh, health expertise can be brought together to to bear on this. So, thank you very much.